Bjorn Valdegard had made the Safari his very own back in 1984, when Toyota took the gamble to enter the Safari in an act of what many perceived to be madness. But the gamble paid off handsomely and the Celica Turbo gave Toyota its first major success, a feat Valdegard was able to repeat for the next couple of seasons. In fact, the Salikas remain unbeaten in Africa, though the rule changes which scrapped Group B in favour of Group A in 1986 really put a stop to that anyway. But the success was enough to get the ball rolling and the TTE operation in Germany, which was Anderson's project and which had masterminded the early success, now stepped up a gear with the introduction of the Salika GT4, which was, as its name suggests, Toyota's first four-wheel drive car, a latecomer to a rally arena which had been overwhelmed by the awesome Audi Quattros and then the Lancia Deltas several years before. After a slow start, the GT4 proved that it had got what it takes two years later in Australia. Kankanen first, Ericsson second and now there was no doubt that the car was a force to be reckoned with. But for many observers, the real turning point in the history of the most powerful Celica of them all came here in Africa in 1990, when Bjorn Valdegard, who by then should have been old enough to know better, won the Safari Rally outright, proving the car had strength as well as speed. Within a few weeks, Carlos Sainz had finally ended the cliffhanger drama of when he would eventually win his first World Championship event and took the GT4 to another memorable win on the notoriously tough Acropolis Rally. Last year's domination was suddenly under threat and Sainz added three more wins to his CV and he'd wrapped up the first of those three championships in the process. The wins and the titles kept on coming, Kankanen and Oriol both won here and claimed the crown, and Africa seemed always to be a waypoint, a mark of Toyota success, a real tribute to the team and the car as well as its drivers.